Hey everyone, this is Nick, and using Linux to get actual work done is a reality. I already explored how I used it for my day job as a product owner back when I used elementary OS, and then back when I used KDE, but now it's time to show how I use GNOME to get work done. So we'll look at my desktop, my laptop, the applications I use, what I actually do with them, and this segue to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare, and if you have instances running Ubuntu 18.04, you're probably aware that it's going end of life at the end of April 2023. Your options are basically to rush a migration or to stay on an end of life release with all the security risks this creates. Or you can subscribe to Tuxcare's extended lifecycle support. You just run one script and you'll keep getting security updates for your 18.04 instances, including for the kernel, Apache, PHP, OpenSSL, Python, and a lot more, without any tooling changes, plus 24-7 support in case you run into an issue. So if you want to take your time to plan your migration from 18.04 to a newer release of Ubuntu, check the link in the description below and get started. And of course, let's start with what I actually do on Linux, like actual work. So these days I don't do any project management anymore, at least not for a company. I use Linux to create three videos per week and two audio podcasts per week, one for patrons and YouTube members, and the other is the Linux and open source news podcast. The link is in the description. Oh, and I also write the occasional article for my website. Although I will freely admit that I do not do that as often as I should. I also answer tons of email, I do video conferencing when I appear on other people's podcasts or when I need to talk with sponsors, and I also do all my web browsing, invoicing, taxes, research, news sifting, personal computing, and gaming on Linux. And these days, for me, it all happens on GNOME, on Fedora to be precise. And for that, I use two devices, a desktop and a laptop. So let's start with the laptop because this is where things take shape before I turn them into videos on my desktop. So I mainly use two laptops. The first one is a Slimbook Executive 16 and the second is a Tuxedo Stellaris 15. They both serve the same purpose and run the same Fedora GNOME with the exact same layout and configurations, although the Stellaris is also my Steam console, often plugged into my TV. They both have a Core i7-12700H, they both have 16 gigs of RAM, and while the Slimbook has an RTX 3050 Ti, the Stellaris has a 3060, and they both have 1440p screens. So basically, when I'm at home, I use the Stellaris because it has more horsepower, and when I'm on the move, I use the Slimbook Executive 16, which is way more portable and lighter. So both laptops run Fedora GNOME using Wayland with a few extensions. First is the all-important app indicator support. I hate tray icons, they look bad and they're a bad solution for background apps. But there's no replacement just yet. And since stuff like Nextcloud, Synology Drive, Warpinator and more use these, well, I added the relevant extension. I also prefer my notifications to appear on the right of the screen instead of in the middle where they block stuff out. So I added the Notification Banner Reloaded extension to make them appear on the top right corner of the screen. I also used the Quick Settings Tweaker extension to add media controls, various application audio levels, and notifications right inside the Quick Settings menu, so everything is in the same place. It's easier to hit with a mouse, where you can just fling it to the top right and click to get what you want. Finally, I also have the Privacy Quick Settings menu to disable the mic and webcam when I don't use them, I have JS Connect to transfer files from my phone to my computer, and I have Light and Dark Theme Switcher to have an easier toggle that actually switches all applications to dark mode, even if they don't support it explicitly. And to manage all of these extensions, I use the app called Extension Manager, which lets you browse, update, install, monitor, configure every single GNOME extension, check for compatibility. It's just a fantastic tool if you need to add extensions to GNOME. And on top of that, I installed the libadvita GTK3 theme, so apps that haven't been ported to GTK4 still look like the rest of my desktop as much as possible. But what do I actually do on these laptops? Well, first is writing my scripts. To do that, I use the IOTAS Note application. It's a GNOME app, it's super simple, and it plugs into Nextcloud, so all my notes are shared between devices. 
It's very simple markdown with very few options. You just have a blank canvas to write stuff, which is exactly what I want. Notes are synced to my phone for easy reference when I actually record the videos and to my desktop where I can make adjustments if needed. To research scripts, I use Firefox as my web browser with the Nextcloud passwords extension to sync those between devices. Now the Firefox account would also do that, and I do use that account to sync bookmarks and history between devices as well, but I do prefer having my passwords locally hosted on my own Nextcloud instance. My laptops are also where I do most of my email, and for that I use Geary, a GNOME app that looks super simple, but does everything I need it to. It's fast, it's stable, it handles folders, although you can't create them there, unfortunately, and it looks like it's a part of my desktop. Plus, it can run in the background, so you don't have to have it open all the time. Although I do have it open all the time. I'm an old person and I like my windows being visible. I also handle all my to-do lists on my laptops, and for that I use Endeavor, another nice GNOME app that uses Nextcloud and the GNOME Online accounts to pull your Nextcloud tasks and sync to it. I have my TLE tasks list, where I make notes of everything I need to do during the week, and a few other task lists for ideas and personal things. Endeavor doesn't support tags, unfortunately, and recurring tasks aren't supported by Nextcloud, which is also an issue. But apart from that, it works great. And these tasks are synced to my phone using Apple Reminders. Boo, I know, using iOS, bleh. Okay, well, when I used Android, I used the Open Tasks app with DAVX5 to sync stuff from Nextcloud, because Google doesn't support that natively for some reason. I also use the Nextcloud desktop client to sync all my files between devices, auto-import all my photos and videos from my phone, and generally have access to everything I need. I also have the Synology Drive client, which has no official Fedora version, but there's a copper repo that packages it, and it lets me sync all my files and photos automatically to my Synology NAS as an additional backup. And finally, I have the occasional use for the GIMP, which, despite its stupid name, is actually pretty wonderful once you understand how it works, and only Office, my main Office suite of choice, which, again, is plugged into my Nextcloud storage. Now, let's see how I use GNOME's workflow to get work done, if we can consider YouTube as work. I make heavy use of the split screen feature. I just drag IOTAS to the left side of the screen and my web browser to the right, and I can write my notes while I research things. I don't need more than split screen tiling on a laptop. I used to really enjoy the Pop! OS tiling features, but even on a 16 inch screen, it just makes Windows way too tiny to be actually useful. Speaking of which, I run both laptops at their native 1440p resolution, but I do scale the fonts by a factor of 1.15, and I use GNOME tweaks to do that. When writing an email, I do the same in the pop-out window from Geary and what I'm actually looking at on the other side, whether it's an invoice, a website, a calendar event, various notes, whatever. I also make heavy use of the activities view by using the touchpad gestures. Three fingers up on the touchpad brings the overview, and then I can just select a window or open a new one from the bottom dock or using the keyboard. And I always have my email on a separate virtual desktop which I switched to using touchpad gestures as well. So, on my laptops, the workflow is super simple. There's nothing weird or complex in here. Just touchpad gestures and split screen and two different virtual desktops. Now, let's move on to my desktop computer. I use a tower that came with Linux pre-installed. It served me perfectly for about three years now, and it has a Ryzen 7 5800X, an RTX 3070, and 32 gigs of RAM. It's plugged into an LG curved ultra-wide monitor at 1440p, and I use a Logitech MX Master S3 as my mouse, plus some generic Logitech speakers. And my keyboard is the cheapo Slimbook RGB keyboard, which I should not like as much as I do, but I don't know why there's something really cool about it. Like, it's fake mechanical rubber membrane thingy, and it's really cheaply built, but it's good. That desktop runs Fedora 37, and default GNOME might be good, but I also add the exact same extensions as on my laptop to have the same experience on all devices. I also never added the minimize or maximize buttons. They're really not needed. For maximizing, I just drag a window to the top of the screen, and minimizing is completely useless to my workflow. If I don't want an app window, I close it, and if I want to keep it without closing it, I'll just move it to another virtual desktop. 
So this desktop computer is where I do most of my work. Video editing, podcast recording, and also not work, but gaming. So once my scripts are written on the laptop, I record them using my camera on an SD card, and I copy the footage over to my desktop using a nice little dongle and Nautilus. Then I use DaVinci Resolve to do the actual editing. It's not open source, unfortunately, but it's just so much more stable, so much faster, and it has way more plugins and tools than any FOSS tool I used that I just cannot see myself moving back to Kden Live or something else anytime soon. Which is also why I stick to NVIDIA GPUs, because Resolve on Linux only works on NVIDIA. Everything else is super hacky, unstable, or virtually impossible to do. And my NVIDIA experience on Linux has been completely flawless, whether it's on my hybrid graphics laptops, on Wayland, or my desktop. I had no issues whatsoever, zero. So I'll make a dedicated video about this specific topic in the future. So when I'm editing, if I need an illustration like a screenshot, I'll just use the Firefox screenshot tool to capture parts of a web page, or the whole web page entirely. If I need to record my screen, I use OBS. It's a great app, and with NVENC support on NVIDIA, it uses barely any resources, which means I can run it while I have Resolve open without any issues. If I need to quickly download a meme video or one of my own that I didn't back up, I use Tube Converter, a cool app that lets you download either the audio or the video or both from popular video websites. All my virtual machine needs are handled using GNOME boxes, which has great performance, is super easy to set up, and even lets you download ISOs directly. I upload my videos using Firefox, it's my main browser, also with the Nextcloud passwords installed. All my thumbnails are done using GIMP. Again, fantastic program if you know how to use it. There's a learning curve, but once you understand it, it's just great. To record podcasts, I use Audacity with a Blue Yeti microphone. That program is ugly as sin, and it's been involved in a few controversies about data collection, which means I should probably move to one of their more private forks, but I didn't take the time to do so yet. It works just right. I just record the audio, I do some noise removal, I apply a compressor, I normalize the audio so it sounds a bit better, and that's about it. And of course, I also use Endeavor there for task management. I use IOTAS to access my notes, to enter the time codes for any videos as I'm editing them, and I use Geary for email there as well. I try to keep my setups between devices as consistent as possible because my weird brain just cannot handle inconsistency, and also it's just better for muscle memory. In terms of workflow, I have DaVinci Resolve open on its own virtual desktop, so I have all the space I need to edit. I also have a file manager window floating somewhere on the same desktop to be able to move files around and add them to the project I'm working on. I also always have Geary open on a second virtual desktop, generally tiled with a Firefox window on the other side for quick access. When I need to record something, I open OBS on another virtual desktop and I record there, so I can only have the thing I want to show and no other window in the background. And since I only publish 1080p videos, because anything higher is completely useless, because most of you watch on a phone and you won't be able to tell the difference on their screens, well, it also means that on my ultrawide, I can just tuck the OBS window to the side, and when I edit the video, I just crop it out, because, yeah, it's 1440p, so I can just zoom in and keep 1080p to be nice and crisp. Same goes for recording podcasts. Audacity is tiled to one side and my notes app to the other, so I can have it at all times as a reference. I use the keyboard a lot on my desktop, with the super key being used to open the activities view or a double tap of the super key to access the app launcher. I use super plus left or super plus right to tile a window and super plus alt plus any arrow key to move to another workspace. When I need to quickly move a window to the next workspace, I use Super Alt Shift and an arrow key. And I also use the Super key to drag windows around or Super plus middle click to quickly resize a floating window. Now this last shortcut is insanely useful. Just hold the Super key and your mouse wheel and just drag from anywhere to resize a window. You don't need to aim for the window border. It is so useful. Now, it is a simpler workflow than the one I used on KDE, because back then I juggled a product owner job and making videos, which meant I used activities to separate the two. Now that I only do content creation, I don't need that feature as much, and so I'm happy with just virtual desktops. 
And of course, there are a few extras around all of this. All my invoicing and accounting is done through a web app called Zervent, which I access using Firefox. I also have an 8 terabyte external hard drive plugged into my desktop that serves as my file storage for all my old video projects, so I can reuse a bit of footage here and there. I often use KDE Connect to transfer photos and videos quickly from my phone to my computers, and I also use Warpinator, a fantastic app that lets you send files from one computer to the other over the local network, especially when I'm reviewing devices and I don't want to set up Nextcloud on these. And for listening to music, since I subscribe to YouTube Premium to avoid having ads on my TV, I use YTM Desktop as my client. It's basically the web app, but integrated with the media controls and with a tray icon, so it's a bit more useful. It's all pretty simple, but I hope it gives you a few ideas for some extensions, for some programs to get work done, and also how to use GNOME's super simple workflow, but very productive, to your advantage. Just like I'm gonna use this segue to today's sponsor to my advantage. So, okay, you've moved to Linux, you use Linux regularly, and you plan to keep using it, and your computer is due for an upgrade. Well, don't look at Windows devices and pray and hope that your favorite distro will work on them. Buy something from Tuxedo, today's sponsor. Tuxedo makes laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box, and when you buy one, you know that Linux will run great on it, because the components have been picked specifically for that. They have a big range of devices that should serve every price point and every need, whether you need a laptop, a desktop, a NUC, something very simple or something super powerful, something for gaming or not, they have everything. All of their devices are very configurable before purchase, and all their laptops are also openable, repairable, and upgradable. So if you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, click the link in the description below and get yourself something from Tuxedo. They're really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. And if you really like the channel and you want to support it, well, there are plenty of links in the description down below. You've got LibraPay, Patreon, YouTube memberships, super thanks, whatever else. You know how to do this. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.